Stephen. Andrew. <laughs> should we spend another quiet night inside number nine? I think we absolutely should. So this week we are entering karaoke room number nine, Empty Orchestra, series three, episode four? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Uh, which was directed by Guillaume Morales, produced by Adam Tandy, written by Steve Pemberton and Reese Shearsmith, and first aired on the 7th of March 2017. Are you ready? I'm ready. Did you enjoy this one? I did. It was nice. To, like I think that aside from possibly, I reckon last gasp but a push is kind of a bit of a happy ending. Mm-hmm. But I think this is our first clear cut happy ending um, to an episode. Really, a real nice heartwarming end. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The likes of which we haven't seen really. Yeah, there's no none of the bad people win. Uh, all of the good people win so it's nice yeah it's a real it's a real change of pace um especially off the back of riddle of the sphinx which has gone as dark as it can get and this suddenly just heads into sort of soapy sitcom territory Mm -hmm. not even sitcom it's like a soap (laughs) it's it's yeah very much so like an office soap it's it's uh, really it's it's a bit refreshing actually because there's no kind of it doesn't take a lot of exposition at the beginning of it it's kind of just one of those office nights out yeah. Um, that plays out. Though I must admit, when I first watched it, I, I found the whole thing very uncomfortable to work. Like I was on edge through the entire oh, thing. Really? And it, I don't know if that's because of the setup of the noise. Like it's quite a bombardment, isn't it? Like, you know, that whole loud music conversations going on, trying to work out, okay, you know, I know this is an episode of Inside Number Nine, so not is not everything is going to be as it seems, and um, yeah, j- just but, and but Connie's character as well. Like. It was, yeah, yeah, it was actually as it seemed. Yeah, it was. It was a pretty straight up, um, just bit of office nonsense. Exactly. Episode really, um, which I really liked because, mm-hmm. like I say, it was a change of pace. It was something a bit different, and it ended nicely with everyone getting what they deserved. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, and um, no one had a slice cut out of their backside. No, Which no, just doesn't. So th- this was their just their first foray into um, writing a musical. <laughs> yeah, and I think they did it really well. It's um, the way that the songs are weaved in. I think is really nice, and you're kind of given this thing at the beginning where I think you're kind of almost meant to sympathise a bit with Roger when he shouts. Is it... Yeah. Is it, it's not going to be just one song after another, is it? Yeah. That's like, um, that, that's like the moment in um, Riddle of the Sphinx when um, Nina says, the, another clue comes up and she's like, oh, fucking oh, hell. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's like that. The vo- they place the voice of the audience into the episode itself. Don't it's they? almost quite, it's quite almost well. a sort of um, fourth wall break. Yes, exactly. With a, with a lo- sort of a little nod to you of yes, yeah, yes, right. it is just going to be one song after. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, we know that is ridiculous. Um, but it's a nice balance, like it, because there is dialogue in it as well, and yeah. and it's not all dialogue over music. There are those little breaks between songs and stuff, which I think are quite are quite helpful. I've just yeah, we haven't had a yeah. synopsis. Did it da da song after another, is it? Okay, synopsis, go. Synopsis. Um, so an office team um, go out for a night together at a karaoke bar to celebrate the promotion of one of their management team. Um, what follows, as you'd expect, is a general's evening of office politics, romance and intrigue. Mm. Nice. Mm. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, congrats, Lions. Uh, 
Cunt, Cunt Rotter Lions, <laughs> Cunt <Rotter> Lions. <laughs> to uh, to Roger, who's got a new job. It's what they're there to celebrate in a bizarre. <laughs> A bizarre situation. There's not many of them. I don't know what, what what the office, you know, what the deal is with the work that they do. It um it really smacks of that sense of someone's decided to organise this night out without asking Roger what he'd like to do for his night out because I don't get the sense that this is really Roger's idea of fun. No. Um as as we hear him say it's not just going to be one song after another, is it? <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> Whose idea of fun do you think it is? I think it's probably Fran. Fran strikes yeah. me as the sort of person who'd want to drag them all along to a karaoke bar. She was into it. Spears. Yeah, she had the uh, congratulations uh, banner as well. Greg, I mean, Greg, he's pretty game, like, in his sumo Outfit. I was desperately trying to work out, like, what's the theme of this? Uh, uh, the he theme tells of this. Us later on, dress. doesn't he? I thought it was Gangnam style. Yeah, which She's strikes slightly... me as a strikes me as a yeah miss a bit of a misstep there. <laughs> Definitely Greg. a misstep. I think basically he has a sumo outfit and was trying to, you know. Uh, what's the word crowbar it kind of into yeah. uh, <laughs> into being relevant um because everybody else is obviously dressed as as pop stars um, apart from roger apart from roger who has a little red, red nose, nose. <laughs> and eventually a tie around his head yeah rambo like all like all good middle-aged men who are taking part in some sort of sing along exactly after a few shots and we will get on to his trait. his sing along, which is a beautiful <laughs> yes, yes, we will <laughs> a beautiful moment. Um, so yeah, I mean, like yeah, we've obviously covered the the kind of general, I think, the general reaction to the episode, which, as you say, is it's just it's a nice happy end. People people get what they deserve. I think that's the best way of putting it. Everybody gets what they deserve. So whether that's a a sacking or it's a, a snogging it you know it all kind of comes together in in a nice way <laughs> you, everyone's going to get either sacked or snogged <laughs> which will you be here you go rod oh cheers and fran put that up for you cunt grotta leons hey well, it's your bloody fault it's meant to say congratulations yeah i worked that out <laughs> anyway to Roger! Oh, you remember us all? Now you're heading up to the sixth floor. Oh, yeah, don't stop. turn to Roger! Yeah. On its on its surface, it's the kind of simple setup. Again, one room. Again, thirty minutes. You know, as we say, say it every week. Like t- the development of the entire thing um, is incredible. Like you, you know the characters. You know, like the situations that um, they're in and all that sort of stuff. And, and you really feel empathetic towards those characters. You, you want to feel empathetic or you need to feel empathetic towards at the end. And I think the, it's a night, it's a fairly straightforward one for them to build the characters on. I think this week, because it's weird and it's, it's what the office relied on was the fact that I think that even people who haven't, spent a prolonged amount of time working in an office still recognize all the characters Mm -hmm. that work in an office the sorts of people that you have who work in an office the everyone knows them we we all know that there's the there's the connie who's probably been since she left school has jumped straight into an office job and she acts like she's still at school yeah she's she's a vile character who is still playing the part of one of the popular girls at school, the bullying, the messing around, sniping, the stealing people's boyfriends, all that stuff. She's just playing it as though she's still 16. Yeah. Um, and never really grew up. Um, Fran is kind of sort of like the the well-meaning one who's mm-hmm. who's quite innocent and she takes her job seriously but she also she wants to be in charge of sort of putting together the party nights out and things like that. Greg bumbles around doing 
something. <laughs> I yeah. He, I get we, we the impression all... he's, the, he's that he'll do as little as he can get away with doing, but then gets really anxious as he is through this episode. It's completely, um, yeah, absorbed in this idea that someone's going to get sacked and he's convinced it's him. So he's that almost neurotic, but like fairly chilled out character. I don't, yeah. It, but you recognize it. He is, he is definitely yeah. relatable. And they're all, they're all the sorts of people who they almost sort of force themselves into those friendships at work. They, and they kind of define themselves by their work life mm -hmm. and their work life matters so much to them and all the dramas that they sort of get themselves into through that um, just feed so heavily into yeah. everything. That is sort of everything. They go out with these people. They have relationships with these people. Everything is tied up with work. Mm -hmm. um, they don't really exist aside yeah. from it. Apart from, I think, I feel like Dwayne does. Dwayne, I get the impression, is the guy who doesn't really take the work all that seriously and kind of yeah. swings in, does his thing. Heads off to pretend that he's giving people drugs. <laughs> yeah. When in fact, they're all just Tic Tacs. <laughs> yeah, which is a kind of interesting little uh, device that they use um, to introduce Dwayne and, and all of that. And yeah, but so again, we'll get, we'll get onto that, I think, in a minute. Um, but yeah, I think that's, that's totally right. Like it's, it's those. And we haven't talked about it for for a while, actually. Like the the almost those those tropes, those stereotypes um, that they use to make it immediately relatable, to make these characters immediately you you understand what they are before you even need to um, before like delving into the the story and the plot. Um, and and Connie, like I mean, Tamsin Althwaite, like brilliant job playing connie because she is repulsive she is yeah she really like is. you you actively despise her and like i think she plays that so well and as you say like it it is that character that you know that that bullying kind of yeah she just needs to grow up and duck can't see because she you know she's got the complaints about um about janet getting the pa job um and puts it all on the fact that she's death and people feel sorry for her and all that and obviously will not do any self-reflection she won't take any responsibility she won't feel like she has a part to play in the fact that she's probably going to end up never getting promoted and obviously getting sacked and she's just going to keep spiraling through that um, over and over and it will be uh, it will never be her her fault it'll always be someone else's fault The one that kind of sticks out a little bit is is Janet because she's not she's not necessarily a typical character that I guess it's because the the kind of the nice well meaning one who's just going about doing her job and just generally being a nice person doesn't generally stick out as a brilliant character all the time. Mm -hmm. Um when you're sort of thinking of your office stereotypes. And so she is a little bit different in that she genuinely seems to sort of, she's, she seems to care about Roger. Yeah. She's his PA, isn't she? Yeah. Um, to some extent, she just sort of seems to take the stuff from Connie on the chin repeatedly and doesn't really react. Mm. And is just, she knows what Connie is. She's, and, she, and I guess she's probably grown up knowing those people constantly. Yeah. And just having to deal with them. So she just sort of rides on it now um, until she gets her opportunity to exact her revenge. Yeah. At the end of it. Um, I was really glad that she sort of stayed that nice character throughout it. Mm -hmm. I was slightly concerned that there was going to be a turn. It's always worrying, isn't it? Yeah. And that, and that she was going to turn out to be um, up to something throughout the entire thing. Um I think that what you said at the beginning about being on edge because of the sort of the music and the oppressive thing and us kind of the thing, the fact that they're in this room with loud music constantly, I guess is a bit of a leveler for her. 
Mm -hmm. because everyone's in a situation and you see the subtitles come up when Greg's talking to um, Connie at one point because they can't hear each other. He's having to mouth and they're having to lip read each other. Um, The fact you've got that pumping loud music is a leveler for Janet and it makes the situation, I guess, a bit more bearable for her that she can switch off um, and just work on the vibrations mm, that's which is quite point. nice and you yeah. see it at the beginning where she's just like no i'm tuning out of this yeah um and i don't know maybe if that's kind of her also switching off just her interaction with that group of people as well she's like, i'm just gonna sit here and i'm just gonna mm. enjoy it but i'm not gonna get involved in any nonsense yeah clearly it doesn't work out <laughs> like no, she's, yeah so, <clears throat> which she yeah, she sort of found herself embroiled in it just because she has the skill of lip reading. Um, yeah, pretty much. Which I, I, I saw people complaining about that as as a twist, and I and I was like, I, I know it is. It's not a, set up. A, is it a twist? It's set up as like a. It's a moment, isn't it? Because it's like you know she lands that on Connie that I do have skills. I can lip read, but. I don't think there's anything surprising about it because through the whole episode, it feels like they're hiding in plain sight and they're not hiding at all. Well, that's and the I, only person that can't see it is Fran, pretty much. Yeah, and she and also she she's lip reading throughout the whole episode. I don't think the lip read is really revealed. I think that that lip read is her. Um, alluding to the fact that she's seen them kissing she's yeah. reading their lips and that's and that's all that is i don't feel like it's a a big surprise that's exactly. sort of being pinned on us i think it's just a bit a little bit of wordplay there yeah. um i think that's right i think that's with, totally right with the yeah. spot in the kissing and then um, you see that with the ultraviolet like the, the yeah. fluorescent green lips and it's like oh we we can all lip read this and it's set up right from the off when um when fran comes in wants so it starts with greg doing the mic checks and checking everything's working which he's taking he's taking very seriously yeah. check 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 um and then he and connie kiss they stop as fran walks in but then as fran walks in he only kisses her on the cheek mm-hmm. because otherwise she would have oh, yeah. glowing lips as well which she doesn't um so we're at the we can see looking back that that was kind of done for a reason, I guess. Yeah. And that's when he's, he's, uh, testing the lights as well. So you can see the different, um, yeah. the different sorts of, uh, that just reminded me of, um, it, it was the Anton putting the, putting the gun, introducing the gun in act one. Yeah. 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 That's going to come back. You're going to be, yeah, Chekhov's you're going to be using that. Exactly. You're going to be seeing them everywhere. You're going to be seeing, Chekhov's guns lying Chekhov's around all over the place guns are now. everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Season of rice, bruv. What have you come as, Blobby Williams? They told me it was Gangnam Style. Yeah, so I mean, let, let's kind of walk through the episode through the songs. I think that might yeah, be... probably a good shout, yeah. ...a good way to kind of structure it, this one. Um, so, yeah, as you've said, he's going in, checks the uh, the microphone. Don't You Want Me is the first... That's his, that's his sound check song. Um, by the Human League. By the Human League. The Human League. Yeah. As our <laughs> friend Jules, Jules Holland, Holland would say. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And so this is, you, you're introduced, as you say, to, um, to Greg and to Connie. First time you don't know what the vibe is here. Maybe they're in a relationship. Obviously, you know, there's a, a bit of flirting going on and, grabbing and that kind of stuff it's yeah she's you see her being quite brash and forward when she's like miming blowjobs and things Um, yeah like she's not backwards in coming forwards connie yeah yeah and so this is and the introduction to the singing of the plot um yeah. when it's a it's quite a sinister second verse the way that connie sings that second verse um and you, you know and that's where she does the sort of phallic microphone work um <laughs> <laughs> and phallic microphone work <laughs> and you're, you're kind of introduced to the you know the five years um like obviously in the song that 
reference to five years and now I'm, I'm going to live with or without you. I must live life on my own. Blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's sort of setting up, okay, how this has been going on a little while. Maybe um, we've got a situation a bit like Nana's party uh, where yeah, there's a, true, a long-term yeah. affair. He needs to make a choice. I knew I'd find a much better place either with or without you. The five years we have had have been such good times. I still love you. But now I think it's time I live my life on my own. I guess it's just what I must do. Don't. Don't you want me? You know I can't believe it when I hear that you won't see me. It's weird. I think this is the thing about the the office thing and and people like connie who are whose life revolves around their job so much is that greg does not come off as a particularly desirable human being or much of a catch in the way that his character is played at Mm -hmm. all and it all seems very much like it's just the guy in the office and Mm -hmm. she needs that drama she needs to be making sure that she's going after the guy in the office it doesn't really matter who that is yeah Um, Greg's just an easy target, really, for her to sort of perpetuate this constant, exactly, yeah, that yeah, constantly being at the centre of something. Um, because, but she says later on that she's not going to let him go, mm-hmm. and for to be that wrapped up in him just seems odd. It does seem he, odd, doesn't it? Yeah, he, he's not. <laughs> Yeah, what is Greg? He's sort of a bit of a, a limp fish, really, isn't he? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, he. This is also when he start when he first sees the list, isn't it? Greg first sees Roger's list. Yeah. So this is where yeah Roger and, comes in, and there's that there's the classic um, hey! like that <laughs> <laughs> typical moment when somebody comes when people are drinking, you're on a night out, and then someone comes through the door. And it's like, oh, it's the boss. Um, Hooray! the uh, envelope falls out of his jacket doesn't it yeah um, Greg does Greg pick it up and sees the names on it yeah before Roger snatches it back off him yeah he snatches it and looks kind of defensive and mm. a little bit upset about it and which you assume is you shouldn't be seeing that like that's a private thing so Greg's name is still on there isn't yep. it because he still hasn't made his choice whatever choice that a is question mark next point. to it but that's where we see the don't, he, he's then singing "Don't you want me?" to Roger. Yeah, Roger becomes the Greg's concern, and yeah. and then that's it for the entire thing. Greg is now preoccupied with that, and yeah. the the affair stuff just comes becomes a bit of a background annoyance for him. Yeah, in some it's respects. really like not at the top of his priorities at all. He's not thinking about all it. All he cares about is that list and what it means. Yeah. And actually, it's, there's a um, almost a kind of precursor of "Don't You Want Me, Baby." Of eventually, it'll be him singing it to Fran as mm-hmm. a because what he cares about is his job, seemingly more than anything else. He yeah. wants he wants his job. Um, so yeah, when he gets sacked, he loses everything. So yeah, because yeah, no one wants his entire him. life around it. Exactly. And but we do also get the foreboding line of we will both be sorry that Connie and yeah. Greg sing to each other that definitely comes true. That's a very on. good point. Yeah. Yeah. So then that song ends. Um Fran asks to be put down. They're not planning any more layoffs, are they, Rod? Greg, you know I can't divulge that. Hey, no shop talk, remember? Tonight is about fun. Yeah. So, who's next? Oh, we put me down, Greg. No. Thought you'd never ask. For a song, I mean. What's it like? Oh, don't get him to choose. You'll be waiting forever. Uh, I have chosen Connie. Oh, which one? Is that a... He's chosen Connie? Is that a kind of little... A little bit of a... Doublon... A doublon tendre. Um, and then Saturday night starts. Oh, the the end of this is just awful. Just Fran repeating Saturday, <laughs> Saturday night. Very David Saturday, Lynch. Saturday, <laughs> Saturday night. And the thing, thing with Fran's singing is it's that kind of spoken singing. Yeah. 
where you just enunciate every word properly <laughs> and she does with it a sort of tune to it saturday <laughs> saturday night <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh. and it's slightly out of time as well um yeah which i on first viewing thought oh she's had the ecstasy tablet um uh, <laughs> she's speeding off this um, is all we also get some organized dancing yes yeah I, so it's brilliant it's something i hate i hate <laughs> i hate group dances um i find them a little bit creepy to watch as a whole group of people all descends on a dance floor and they all know the exact thing to do and they all know the same moves and they like robots that have had a switch <laughs> yeah it's just, just sort of interrupted yeah it's really odd um luckily roger is not like that and is at least one and a half steps behind <laughs> Yeah. At all times. <laughs> oh, man. Yes, those situations are the worst situations. Um, but there's something amazing about that scene where they're... And Greg's, you know, talking about... He's asking Roger about st- st- stuff to do with the... Uh, to, to do with contracts and, and that kind of thing. Whilst they're just... He's dressed as a sumo wrestler. <laughs> and Roger's got his little red nose on I think he has his red nose on at that point. And they're just going through, just very matter-of-factly, just going through the routine. Um, which, for anybody who was uh, around in the 90s, probably did learn that routine. Uh, I remember I, doing it at not school, what I learned. primary school discos. Yeah, I, I think I, I know the Macarena. Yeah, I see, don't I don't know, I know that. No. It's not like... Um, I think you could do the conga. The, what's the really bad What Cha-cha slides where you're told what to do. Oh, man. <laughs> all times. <laughs> just, I, yeah, I can't get on board. It's horrible. I hate, yeah. I hate them. I hate them all. I hate I think all it's, of those it's things. People's, <laughs> it's people's faces that they have when they're doing it as well. It's, it's, <laughs> there's something really unsettling about just seeing, as you say, like that robotic, almost cultish... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No offense it's to anyone this, who loves these things. Then like, this, then this, then this, then this. Yeah. <laughs> da, 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 da. Step initiate, to the right. Initiate sequence. Yeah. Pull it's, out the yeah. gun. Yeah, so this is where we meet Dwayne. Um, Dwayne. And there's a, yeah. like a precursor to meeting Dwayne where uh, Connie speaks to Janet. Yes. Um, and then asks, yeah, have you got a drink or something? And oh, no, she says, Death Girl. Is that, is that what she what says? says? Yeah, something, hot, something, something horrible. Ruder than, have you got a drink? Do you want a drink? Would you like a drink? Um, and she says, yeah, Dwayne's getting her one. And then she says, be careful. Uh, he might slip you a roofie and then, and this is also when you realize Greg can sign, which is quite interesting. Yeah. Which is, yeah, that was kind of like the redeeming part of mm. Greg's character that he clearly cares enough about other people that he's learnt to sign at some point. Mm. Maybe he's got someone else in his life somewhere that he needed to sign for, but there's, there is something in there that yeah. Greg's a pleasant human being in some way. And he's obviously got that relationship with Janet where he's the, he's the interpreter, he's the translator yeah, for, yeah. Um, for things. So they have a, a bit of an understanding there. Um, and yeah, so then he signs drugs and looks at a little bit like, why, I don't know. Why, why um, he's, what, yeah. he's talking to you about <laughs> What's going on there? <laughs> um, but, but then, you know, Dwayne enters... And says, right, it's time for Dwayne's famous pills roulette. Um, <laughs> living up to his reputation. Uh, take, so, go on, take us through the, um, can you take us through the roulette? Draw? Yes, so he, he's got one, he's got an ecstasy, he's got a Viagra, he's got a ketamine, a paracetamol, a laxative and an orange Tic Tac. Okay. This is not a game that I've ever heard of before. I don't know if I'm just an innocent human being, but I've never heard of Pill Roulette. Okay, peeps, listen up. It's party time. So that means it's time for the wings. Famous Pill Roulette. Yeah! Inside, there's one ecstasy, 
one Viagra, one ketamine, one paracetamol, one laxative, and an orange tic tac. Oh. Did I blue jack the paracetamol? Look, I'm sorry, Mr. C. It's potluck, I'm afraid. It strikes me as a terrible, terrible idea. <laughs> yeah, it's not ideal, <laughs> I don't think. I feel like if you're going to take something when you're on a night out, you should probably know what it is. Yeah. As should everyone. And everyone yes, dipping into something and just taking a random pill is not. <laughs> no. And uh, I think it makes the episode, or this part of the episode, more interesting before you know that actually mm. it's just all Tic Tacs. Um, because you are looking at the characters thinking, I wonder what you got. Um, and yeah, I, th- I think with... Um, Especially with Fran at that moment, because she j- she does like she skates off with the Saturday night, like she goes fast. <laughs> I'm like, man, you're off. Um, <laughs> Roger just wants the paracetamol. Is, is there a paracetamol yeah, exactly. Roger for his headache, that, please? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which he decides to cure instead by buying an entire tray of shots, <laughs> starting to just down them on his own. <laughs> yeah, uh, we need more drinks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And you hear some more offensive stuff from um, from Connie oh, towards. Uh, is, this about the, is this about Janet. the boat? Oh no, towards Janet. Yeah, well, she talks. She says about the um, about being tone deaf, and then says, "No offense, Janet." Yeah. Um, when she's asked if she's going to sing. So who's next then, Connie? No, not me. I'm tone deaf. No offense, Janet. Sorry. Did you see something? No. Have you seen this? She's all over him like cling film on a buffet. Oh, she's just letting her hair down. I know she's disabled and everything, but I can't stand her. Why? Well, she knows that everyone feels sorry for her and she uses it. How do you think she got that PA job? No, I was surprised it wasn't you, Connie. No, I'm not saying that, but it's interesting, isn't it? Um, and then you see that jealousy towards Dwayne and, J- and Janet when they're sort of selecting some, uh, selecting uh, Dwayne's gonna, about to sing Wham!, um, <laughs> and uh, and then she's like, they're like cling film on a on a buffet, um, and it, and it's like that's why why have you got a problem? Like, what's going on here? Um, and then that's where you get the resentment about that she got the PA job ahead of her, um, and then um, yeah, there's that little jibe about when Greg enters the conversation, you're like, don't go poking your nose into other people's cracks, Greg. She's lovely. <laughs> she's just, yeah. She just is, a child. She's vile. Um, and it, it strikes me is that she'd probably rather be going after Dwayne, to be perfectly honest. Dwayne is probably more some, someone that she'd kind of rather see herself with, mm. but she realises she's too old for it. Yeah. Really? Dwayne's yeah. just Dwayne's a young guy who's not going to show any interest. And so she'll go after Greg and stick with Greg. Yeah. And never let him go. Never, ever let him go. And so Dwayne comes in with his set piece. <laughs> show him how to rap like a white man. <laughs> <laughs> the which wham is rap. Kind of, which is kind of a weird spin on what I imagine you would normally get at these office things where the white guy in the office decides that he's going to take on some NWA um, <laughs> really inappropriately. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, <it's laughs> and sing all the lyrics <laughs> without missing a single word. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but instead we get, um, yeah, Dwayne treating us to wham, the wham rap. But she's not being laid off anytime soon. Who's being laid off? What have you heard? Oh, nothing. This is a private conversation. We're just having a bit of crack. Yeah. Don't go poking your nose into other people's cracks, Greg. Yeah. Okay, peeps, let's do this. Let's learn how to rap like a white man. Oh! Woo! Woo! Yeah, so on the door. Yeah. Um, which is all about losing your job and reveling in it. Is it? I've reveling not looked bit- Yeah, into it's all the- about being sort of proud of reveling in being on the dole and enjoying life. Okay. Having lost your job. Yeah, yeah. I think, and I think that's kind of... It's telling us that Dwayne isn't really fussed about the job that he has and he's yeah. the sort of person that will just go and pick something else up. He's not really that bothered. And if he were to lose, if he were the one to be chosen, then 
Yeah, he's not bothered. So he doesn't even mention it. He doesn't look concerned at any point during the no. process. No, he, yeah. he just come. He's just come along for a, a bit of fun. He does he's, have his set piece. He does like a. He likes to sing. He likes to dance. Yeah, he's he likes being the center of attention. The moment he walks in the room, and yeah, we get our second. Way! Yeah, <laughs> except appears. it's it's him doing it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> to, to himself on behalf of everybody else. I'm he's here. that character. Yeah, he's that with his um, single. Silver, silver glove. It, 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 he, outfit. he reminded me of um, of Joss. <laughs> because <laughs> that's two in two weeks. Isn't it? <laughs> no, the no, last one was three little, that was a while ago. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we've got a friend Joss who, <laughs> like, his set piece is Gangster's Paradise, um, and it just reminded me of that moment where it's like, <laughs> right, all the attention turns to me. <laughs> I'm going to lead you through this. <laughs> uh, which is great <laughs> and so this is um yeah like just just wanted to say with um with janet as well like the seeing things from her point of view or hearing things from mm. her point of view in terms of the the way that the sound muffles and you you hear the bass heavy uh frequency so you kind of get how she hears things how like what's going yeah. on there um and and I think, you know, just coming back to what you said about being concerned that she was there was going to be some reveal about her not being who she seemed to be. Um, I think the fact that you you do see that or you do hear that um, several times is almost a nod to there's there's nothing we're not misdirecting you around her deafness or anything like that. This is so, yeah, like that's it's not going to be like. Um, Famous Five, I can't remember what Famous Five it was, but this always sticks in my mind since reading it as a child. Where block five go to it might be five. a Treasure Island or Desert Island or some sort of island. And there's a okay. character called Block. Um, spoiler alerts! If you're gonna, <laughs> if you're gonna read it, fans of Enid Blyton who haven't <laughs> quite made it round to this Famous Five, but we don't know which one it is. But one of them. It's about an island, and he pretends to be. He's like a butler. And he pretends to be deaf, so ah. um, basically ends up getting everyone thinks he's deaf. So he, but he hears everything. So he hears all the plans and that kind of stuff. So this is. I'm, this I'm was, glad this, this wasn't a, that. This was a dangerous avenue. I, there's only I only remember one fi- famous five story. That was the one on the moors, and now oh, yeah, yeah. he's being dropped out of planes. Yeah, putting, being put into the caves in the quarry. Ah. Oh. They were good I've books. definitely read that. I loved yeah, Famous Five. Five, yeah. five on Mystery More, I think that one was called. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Brilliant. That's the next podcast. You can edit that one out. That's <laughs> <right>. <laughs> yeah, I really, I really like the um, the pleasure you can see that she gets in putting her hand on the speaker. Yeah, and and feeling it come through. Um, and I don't, and I don't want that to sort of come across as patronising at all towards people who can't hear and that's kind of the way they mm. appreciate music but it's 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 kind of quite a nice moment to see her enjoy that especially when we see the payoff at the other end of the episode yeah um with how she yeah how that then sort of comes back again well yeah it's, it's just lovely like how she's connected to connected to the situation where she could easily be sort of isolated but actually she she is connected to that and as you said earlier, like the, the sound is actually a leveler. Um, and she's able to enjoy Dwayne, Dwayne's performance as well in that sort of mm-hmm. way. And there, there's something lovely about that. Um, do, I think, yeah, I mean, she's, she's really the only one who seems to enjoy aspects of the evening in a, in a genuine way. Like Dwayne does from the point of view of being the center of attention and getting to be a performer yeah and doing his his wham rap um and i guess those two characters are the ones who are i guess the purest in some sense in that it is just they're just doing their thing mm-hmm. they they don't have anything going on really that and Dwayne clearly the main aspect of Dwayne's character we see apart from the bravado and the questionable um 
recreational drug games um, is his soft spot for um, Janet Mm -hmm. and the way that he does care. And not it just in a, I feel sorry for her because she's the deaf girl being teased. There's a genuine... Oh, there's a genuine affection right, there, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. Right, right all the way through the episode. Even when he's saying to her that he just wants to be friends and he doesn't see her in that way. It turns out that wasn't true later on. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, yeah it's potentially that's... a moment where he's never even considered his feelings in anything more than just that really... Yeah lovely genuine friendship affection and then he's gone away and had a th- think about it it's like well actually there's something there and, like, and connie's little joke kind of backfired on her mm. completely i mean connie gets her comeuppance in many ways <laughs> and one of which is shoving Dwayne and janet together yeah she is really the entire reason that happened <laughs> mm. Um, but yeah. yeah, I think but Dw- that's that's kind of what we see about Dwayne. There's no underhand behaviour going on. There's no, yeah, yeah, yeah. He ha- he he, do- he does have a, a real soft spot for Janet, unlike Roger's hard spot for Connie later on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is yeah, <laughs> lovely. Um, he obviously got the Viagra. <laughs> So that, so this moves like there's the the weird almost slapsticky um attempt at getting the envelope which are, are through mm. this episode oh, yeah. and this is the first one where you know he um Greg tries to get to the jacket hanging up on the door to get it out and then he's like pulled away given the microphone and tries to rap <laughs> but it's too fast for him <laughs> um which and is then, great. Then there's like a triple hiding thing going on as they try and sneak Fran yeah. towards the door, isn't there? And so that's she, in the next song, yeah. And then the door gets opened on her and she gets taken out. <laughs> in the proper slapstick moment, yeah. yeah. Door in the face. Take Takes me back to A Quiet Night in. Yeah. Yeah, Quite it's that sort, of, that sort of slapstick. Yeah, definitely. So um, our, next, our next song was... Um, since you've been gone so this is yeah so um roger (laughs) it's my party and i want some rock (laughs) so he's mentioned white snake has he mentioned white snake already at this point white snake he mentions white snake at the end yeah seems seems to come up a few times yeah (laughs) white snake (laughs) do you think she's a fan of white snake (laughs) (laughs) i didn't consider that your mind Stephen. your mind oh awful thank you right who's next I'll, I'll get some more beer. Tell me how it's that, Rog. No, 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 no. I'm no. how it works. Or no, I know what I'm doing. I just want to pick something that I can really go for. Um, yeah, tie around the head. Uh, after, um, after his Cockney accent in <laughs> seance time, we now get the full-on Brummy. <laughs> Absolute extreme Brummy. Um, and lots of people um, lose their accent when they sing. Um... <laughs> Roger does not. No. I think Roger. If anything, Rogers gets more pronounced. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, I love it. I'm not going to try it. No, <laughs> I'll put a clip in. Otherwise, it's just offensive. <laughs> um, and this is yeah. It's, it's fine. So this is where the, and the rest of them are sort of looking on and thinking, "Man, he's really drunk. Um, why is he drunk?" And then Greg's like, "Well, he's got to sack one of us," and he thinks that's. This Why this he's... bloke's all churned up because he's going through this horrible decision pro- making process of I've got to sack one of them and one of them will be gone and that's why he's singing since you've been gone yeah and I like I like the shift in the camera work for this song because it kind of goes it switches from the kind of the ramshackle following them around a club to almost like a stadium rock actual film yeah <laughs> yeah where roger's center stage with a spotlight on him um air guitaring and yeah it's brilliant yeah <laughs> definitely i love it the brain 
And the, uh, yeah, that when he's singing the, uh, oh, 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 like that, the, that moment is like, <laughs> I think you, I've, I've been at weddings, I've been at events where you're all just shouting, you're shouting bits oh. of songs like that, um, which is similar to the um, Titanium at the end, yeah. where people are just absolutely going for it. And, Belting. and there's, and there's real passion and real emotion in that. Like, and it, to me, it's, I think they've caught, like they've captured the, the way music connects with everyday people and mm. connects with us in everyday life. Cause it's like, you know, this guy's obviously going through hell in his personal life and this is an outlet for that. And he's just, he's like gunning and gunning for it. And we're like, yeah. And Roger's the same with titanium at the end where he's, you know, doing the little brush the dust off the shoulder move yeah, yeah. and, and singing, like it's just singing full blooded, like, yeah. And it, I, I just really like that kind of connection to music as a, as a human hmm. outlet. Like it's really cool. Yeah. And the fact that the, the song, even if it's not deliberate, the songs that we listen to as we, go through stuff kind of end up soundtracking that and bringing you back to it mm. you remember you remember what you were listening to when things happen yeah not necessarily in a certain moment but you remember the sorts of stuff you were listening to around certain events in your life and being able to go back to those and i guess in some respects they kind of, um rod i mean when roger's got his choice to play this he's kind of sort of forcing that this is a song about someone leaving me. Yeah. It, yeah. Whether he's tr- trying to communicate that to other people or he's just like, that's the song I really need to sing right now. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas the other ones, I don't know whether they're kind of... The, On a more unconscious Freudian level. <laughs> yeah, the story's kind of fitting around those. Yeah. And, it, and it's a narrative device. Whereas this one, Roger's like, right, I know what I need to hear right now. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. the torment of... Yeah. <laughs> Since you've been gone, and that's and it's uh, not, and not the Kelly Clark, Clark. The Kelly Clarkson one would have been a, a cracker as well. Yeah, it'd have been brilliant. Or just singing that <laughs> <laughs> in Brummy. <laughs> yeah, and this is so. This is like a precursor then to him being okay talking about it almost. Mm. Um, it's, which yeah, it's obviously quite cathartic, isn't it? it yeah, kind of, it's almost like I, he he's he's ready for that um, for that moment after. I mean, he's they forced yeah. his hand a little bit with going and doing that little stupid move but then actually they don't get the the envelope falls out after they've done that anyway and the many shots have probably put him into that into that situation as well they probably have of, it leads him to both being happy to get involved with the song after song <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes so true yeah. then to open up with regards to the other stuff there is one bit in that um with the three of them are arguing about the sacking thing. Mm. So they, they start their conversation at that point about one of them being fired. Um, and Janet sits there and sort of smiles to herself. And that again, for me was, uh, Oh no, is, is Janet, (laughs) is Janet up to something? Okay. And I, I was wondering through all of this, whether she, whether she knew something already, whether she was, sort of part of the firing process and making the decision turns out no not later on it was just a she was just enjoying seeing a bit of uncomfortableness probably mainly with connie probably yeah. quite happy seeing connie suffering to some extent yeah i wonder whether um i wonder whether she knows as is pa whether whether he's told, he's talked to Janet well, about it. Well, Greg clearly thinks so because Greg's sort of pleading with her to tell him. That's when we see sort of Greg really going through uh, the signing as well when he's trying to get out of her. Like, do you know anything? My sales have been poor. Is it going to be down to sales because mine have been dreadful? Is it going to be me? Um, 
he is completely obsessed at this point. Yeah. 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 Um, he's probably, I think he's told himself at this point that he's probably for it. Really. Mm-hmm. He's decided that, yeah, no matter how this plays out. I he's guess gone. he's pro- maybe it's a sign that he's, he's carrying a lot of guilt at some level and he's really, really just struggling and he's got himself into yeah, a maybe. place in life that he really wishes he hadn't. And yeah, he's kind of backed him. These four walls are closing in. <laughs> <laughs> you were <went laughs> <for laughs> the fix you put me in. <laughs> <laughs> that's the words that's, for him. That, so that's when, um, <laughs> <laughs> so Connie goes to dance with Roger. And yeah. that was distracting. So Greg can get the envelope. Yeah, but no, it wasn't Greg going for the envelope. Connie was behind him. No, yeah, Fran, uh, was, Fran behind was behind him. him yeah. It was like a, a double, <laughs> and that's when she gets smacked in the face. Yeah. Um, there's and that's our proper slapstick moment, isn't it? And um, that's while Ro- Rogers poking Connie with his yeah. white snake. <laughs> 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 and we find out there wasn't a bit of Viagra. The pills were all Tic Tacs. <laughs> yeah, it's just genuine. They're all just Tic Tacs. What? Yeah, what? What, because I'm black? I must be a drug dealer. Uh, I thought I was starting to feel a buzz. Yeah, a sugar rush. So, um, yeah, that's that's when we find out that none of them are acting for any reason other than it's them. Yeah. No, none of them are under any influence of anything. They're all just, just being who they are. themselves. Yeah. I guess the one thing with the roulette game is that if no one knows what they've taken no one's playing up no to anything so you're not acting in a particular way because you've taken something yes like a weird placebo where you think yeah i've taken something but i, I should be doing i don't know what i should like be this. conforming to <laughs> yeah um, yeah. And none of them would be able to do that because they don't know what it is. For all they know, they exactly. just had an orange Tic Tac. I'd have thought, though, that an orange Tic Tac, even if you just swallowed it, would still taste of an orange Tic Tac. Taste like an orange Tic Tac <laughs> and look like an orange Tic Tac. Um, yeah. So this is, yeah. So here, then Greg gets the envelope. Roger sees he's got it and, he, and he's like, oh, you've had a good look, have you? And it, there you're thinking, right, okay, there's, a bit of a problem here potentially yeah. between workers um and but then he comes out with the i don't care mary's leaving me uh it's the divorce papers and all of that stuff and then talks about the tickets they had to go and see white snake and and all that uh, <laughs> and then um, my tickets maybe that's why she left <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she, she spent all the money it. on white snake <laughs> <laughs> so to speak um and and that's yeah and janet is like what's going on and connie's yeah, she like even, she even gets to dig in here doesn't she don't make him repeat it have some sensitivity for once in your life like oh, uh, steady on rod you're uh, stabbing me a little bit what's happened don't make him repeat it for god's sake you can see he's upset have some sensitivity for once in your life come on Roger. It actually made me feel angry. Like exactly. I was, I was genuinely feeling real hatred towards Connie yeah. at this point, where it was just constant. It exactly, was just, yeah. And just so overboard, like just completely beyond what is human. Like even the worst of the worst. And that's just feels extreme. Connie was, Connie, it was around this point that Connie was dancing with Dwayne as well. For a bit and sort of goading Janet as well, yeah. And just she just can't help herself. She's yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and so the next song uh, is this where we do. I we know him so well. That, Sorry, no, we don't know whether Fran's. Oh, we see that Fran's been circled at this point. Yeah on the list oh yes so we know we know f- something's going on with Fran yeah he hasn't told her yet but and um, yeah yes during this next it. song well Greg because Greg sees it doesn't he 
And that's and then during the next song, this is when we have the lip reading bit with him telling Connie. Yeah, and that moment where the the tone changes of like, um, wasn't it good? Yeah, which oh, is like, so oh, good. you're such a. Oh. I hate you. <laughs> wasn't it? Yeah, so this is, again, like, a brilliant choice by Fran. I've never seen, I've never, I think this is an example of a song from a musical that is, it's so much better known than the musical it's from. Yeah. So I think most people have heard this song, but haven't seen, is it from Chess? Sure. There you go, I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what Chess is about, um, but I do know this song. Yeah, I know it so well. <laughs> you know it so well. You do. You're always singing it. <laughs> this is your this is your karaoke set piece. <laughs> I got every single one of these. It's like they spoke to me. <laughs> yeah. So this is yeah highly inappropriate given the news that um, that Rogers just shared. So it's all about like perfect situations must go wrong, and you know. The- well, I guess it's. Yeah, I guess it's not cheering him up, is it? As he sits there and looks at the picture of him and his wife. Um, yeah. Feeling a bit... Yeah. Like, yeah, this is this is not helping right now. Yeah. yeah. What have you done? <laughs> and then it becomes, yeah, the duet part of the musical where Connie, it's basically Connie and Fran singing with Greg stuck in the middle of it. Um and that the the contrast between like he needs his fantasy and freedom versus he needs more security mm. and i think over the course of the episode the fact that he needs more security is the thing that's winning um yeah and so that's i don't know is that fran's side yeah like, i think so greg doesn't strike me as someone who really needs fantasy and freedom i think no, what he I think needs it is seems to be stressing him out security yeah, yeah. there's also a nice moment when so it's during this song that roger goes and gets the divorce papers to get them out and sign them and yes it's, it's on the line he needs his fantasy and freedom that he takes his wedding exactly ring off. and that's really about like him that. yeah, yeah it's really lovely yeah so it's like actually and he i think that that's some kind of flip in terms of your thinking when you meet these characters it's like rogers he's more of that conservative i need security i'm mm. you know I, I like my white snake like it's very <laughs> very i don't know just very kind of middle of the road rock yeah. middle-aged man uh yeah, much, yeah. You, you're letting your hair down a little bit but ultimately it's all about security but actually you know as it soon becomes clear I'm up in and leave. I'm going to go to Florida and spend time with my brother. And and actually you can imagine his life from here on in is going to be one of a kind of measured midlife crisis. I think (laughs) I can imagine just another version of him still with a thick Brummy accent in the Florida Everglades surrounded by (laughs) alligators all day still (laughs) and snakes. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, You're a nice white snake. (laughs) After saying I don't want to cause offence, so <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. Would you like... Look, uh, Roger, would you like to uh, see my albino python that I have here? <laughs> oh! <laughs> I've got another word for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, so the, the lyrics definitely pertinent in this song. And that's um, when we get the... Um, so he's dancing with um, Fran, Greg's dancing with Fran and saying, yeah, I know who's getting sacked because he's now yeah. seen Fran's name circled um, and points at Fran and that's when Connie's just elated. Oh, so good! Yeah. Oh, so fine! And you've yeah. got Dwayne and Janet dancing together and they have a kind of awkward little kiss at the end because obviously Janet because uh, we haven't said, uh, talked about the phone message. Connie, so mm. Connie picks up 
Dwayne's phone and sends it's, Janet a message. It's so awful. It's saying, so I really childish. like you. I hope you like me too. Or do you like me too? Oh, um, sing a song language. and I will know. Yeah. Even the language is just, it's childish. It's secondary school nonsense, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I like you. Do you like me? It, you're like <laughs> Yeah. Vile behavior. Um, yeah. And then, so then, um, Roger calls Fran over and says, can I have a word? And this is, this is one of those moments of misdirection because, yes. Um, well, you is, know, is, is it at this point? Is it misdirection well, at this point? Because I, I don't know whether he changes his mind afterwards or now. I guess it doesn't really matter that much, but he, no, I think it, I, because of the way that he says, um, you know, circumstances got out of my control, like, and her reaction to, to what he's saying as you go back and see it again is like he's basically reassuring her that she'll be all right doing the oh, management she's, role she's got you've got greg yeah greg will greg help, will you, help through. you through that yeah so it's i don't think greg's helping anyone through any management. no role, i think i think she, i think fran will be more than capable on her own and actually yes. again the uh the freedom aspect uh is is going to be massive for her mm. and it's gonna she's actually going to be so much better off <laughs> after this yeah. Um, and you don't you don't, you don't feel any fear for her future um, as a result of losing Greg. You think no, not at all. You're going to step into that power that you that is so there in the titanium part. Yes, it's like this is all yeah. about the power of these people, like who who have been kind of, I guess, under the thumb of other people and bullied. Yeah, they and, are breaking out exactly, and not in um, a bad way. And this is not in a spotty um, way, <laughs> <laughs> not in a jail way. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah, it's just so out of the blue. Yeah, and I apologize for that, but um, circumstances got out of my control. But I can't change your mind. No, I'm afraid not. But you know, you've got Greg, and he'll help you through it. I'm sorry, Janet spots um, Connie feeling up Greg in the back of his sumo suit at this point as well mm. because she started to look at the screen to put her own song on um, and this is where and this is the thing is that Connie's guard is down completely around Janet because as far as she concer- is concerned Janet's the deaf girl who can't hear anything that's being said so she's kind yeah. of free to say what she likes um, but she's not she forgets that A lip reading and B, she can still see you. <laughs> and then and she says, can I help you? Um, like, yeah. yeah, disparagingly, horribly. No. Um, and yeah, then, so then we get Janet singing Only You, Only you. to Dwayne. Yeah. Where Connie, once again, steps her knobbishness up to a whole new level where you thought things couldn't, get any worse but she, she yeah ultimately this yeah part of her plan to completely humiliate her um, oh there was um there was one other thing actually about the um uh connie feeling free to just say stuff uh, with janet there and i think you're kind of seeing this with her using the karaoke as well She's kind of taking the opportunity to say things and hide behind the music because she wants it out there. She wants to just say stuff mm. and and get away with saying it. And she thinks that when she's tying everything up in songs, she can do that. So when she's just singing along to the Human League at the beginning, you can hide behind the fact that well, it's just a song. Yeah. But actually what she's saying is genuinely what she's thinking. It's the same with chess in that one as well. It's the yeah. same thing. She's saying the things she wants to say. Um almost in Fran's face and then being able to go, don't know what we're talking about, it's just a song. Yeah. Can't have a go at me about that. Just a bit of banter. Just a bit of banter. banter. Yeah. Um, And I think, yeah, she's always pushing what she can get away with Mm -hmm. in this whole situation, in this whole scenario. And I think the the karaoke allows her to do that a bit as well. Yeah. But then, yeah, then she, you're right. She then pushes her obnoxiousness up another notch with, Yeah. Which nobody, nobody's on board with. No, no. Everyone calls her out on it pretty much. Yeah. 
Because even because like, no. Fran Fran knows that she sent that message mm. and doesn't doesn't rein her in, which is a shame. Um, but is that's, that's is the not whole thing though? Isn't yeah, it? it's kind of the yeah. I mean, doesn't want to get on the wrong. She doesn't want to get on the wrong side of Connie. I think, yeah, I think you're right. Like. She yeah. has to suck up to her a bit because otherwise she knows she could be on the receiving end of it. So to some extent, she's happy to see someone else on the other end of Connie's yeah. vile behavior and it not being her. But then we do reach a point here where she's like, no, that's, that's, that's too much. Yeah. Yeah. And she, she goes over and tells Dwayne and, and, and you hit, you're seeing this and hearing this through Janet's um, kind of POV. Mm. She's, She's there, she's singing, and she's looking on as Fran goes over to Dwayne and they're having that conversation and then he gets his phone out and looks at it and and it's like, what's going on? You know, and she that that is a moment you, you feel that sense of real isolation for her cause, the thing is, and the though, loneliness. Like, but I think that the deafness there and the POV thing there, if you were up at the front there with the music blaring singing... You still wouldn't be able to hear what was being said there. You no, still you wouldn't, wouldn't know no. what was what was going on in that conversation. So it's almost like that her her being deaf doesn't really contribute to that. It's oh no, like it's back, not. It's, it's kind of back to the sort of the leveling thing, yeah. where no matter whether you're deaf or not, that everything that happens there could have happened to someone who wasn't deaf and just wasn't particularly good at singing. Yeah. Um, and Connie wanted to have a joke about that. Um, and to be honest with you. I was a bit gutted when Dwayne switched it off. Yeah, I know. Because I felt like they could have ridden it out. Genuinely could have ridden it out and just gone. Brilliant. It a, yeah, I think it was a bit offensive. Yeah, it was, it was like, there's no, no need to. I can't to, let this carry on. This yeah, because it wasn't actually that bad. So <laughs> She was just um, two beats ahead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which Fran was. <laughs> anyway yeah. wasn't she saturday saturday, saturday night, night. <laughs> um david bowie <laughs> saturday night um, saturday <laughs> saturday <laughs> uh so yeah and the other the line that i just caught sight of that i jotted down was the thing that connie says um but it's before this song when when Greg's response to um, Fran, him believing that Fran's going to get sacked, is, I'm so relieved. I thought it was going to be me. Um, and then that's when Connie says, oh, you should let let her go as well. Like, you should sack her or whatever. Um, give her her notice on this. Give well, her her notice. That's it. Give her a notice. Give her a fresh start. It's what she deserves. And I think Connie saying that, she thinks she's being really mean, but she's, that's there's, that's the most truthful thing she said. That actually, she does deserve a fresh start in a good way. Like she deserves yeah. a complete break from that. And we see, um, we see another reference to like the the fresh start with with Roger when he's talk. Then brings this announcement in, um, and he's very, he's very. So he breaks up the what's about to become quite a hostile environment around. Yeah. This, yeah, yeah, yeah. this situation and he he says that that wasn't very nice connie <laughs> and then he's you like can't help, you can't help i can't help myself can i can't um <laughs> and then he says uh about he announces the fact that he had to let someone go to balance the books i love the lineup walking down the line um with each of them and sort of almost looking him in the eye <laughs> yeah. to, the, to, to reveal who it was. Yeah, yeah. And then the big reveal is, I'm the one going. He's the one leaving. <laughs> well, the twist. The we twist. The, twist. <laughs> <laughs> the big office workplace twist. I'm going to go. Um, and then, Yeah, and he's going to have his fresh start in Florida, um, but he's going to need a replacement. Um which is really lovely that it's that it's Fran and that he that he has more than you know he's, he's got a lot tied into that in the the kind of I, I know you're hoping to tie the knot with uh, with Greg and actually yeah you know what he hasn't changed his mind has he there wasn't a change at all because he wouldn't have gone from 
firing her to promoting her. <laughs> putting that's her in right a right position of management. Nonsense. That's absolute nonsense. <laughs> Cut no. that bit out. <laughs> Garbage. <laughs> Garbage analysis. <laughs> I'm going to have to leave it in so that I've got a frame of reference for this bit. <laughs> I have no right being on this podcast. <laughs> now then, there's been a lot of rumours flying around the office about voluntary redundancies, and it's true. I was charged with the unhappy task of letting one of you good people go. I want you to know I fought tooth and nail with management over it until they promoted me. Now I am management, so... I have no choice. Somebody has to go to balance the books. And the person I've decided is going to leave the company is me. With Mary gone, I'm going to start over. I have a brother in Florida I don't see much of, so I'm going to head out there. But that means I'm going to need a replacement. And the person I've decided to recommend to the board is Fran. I can't think of anybody better to tag the team forward. I know you and Greg are hoping to tie the knot, so hopefully this will help send you on your way. Thanks, Roger. <laughs> Congratulations, babe. Incredible. Can we start looking for a mate of what now, please? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well done, Fran. Thanks. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, and so start looking for a bigger flat, finally. Obviously, you know, Greg's been keeping things small, uh, but then it's it's about the motion of the ocean rather than <laughs> the size of the boat. Yeah, it is, boat. it is just as crude as that, isn't it? Yeah. yeah it's no clever than that. Though. It's fine. Um, yeah. And, and he, then yeah, enter Chantel. Yes. And a Hindu experience. Oh, we have, we do, however. Oh yeah, they come in there, don't they? And then, um, so Greg spinelessly kind of goes along with it, doesn't he? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll, that's fine. Of course, then, Dan, then, yeah. Then the Hindu comes in and Connie is not impressed with Greg. Yeah. And his... Are you really going to do that? Well, no, I, I've, I'll, I'll tell her in the morning tomorrow. when the dust settles. <laughs> yeah. It's probably what he's been saying for the last five years. And that's when they kiss in front of Janet. Yeah. Yeah. Big mistake, and that's where she. T- that's Connie. She's, then says, "I'm never letting you go." Yes, but Janet is reading their lips right now. I mean, you don't really need to be able to read their. No, she's no. reading their lips in the sense that they're kissing, isn't she? That's yeah. what she's reading. Is that what she? When Connie, when she tells Connie, do you think that's what she means? Even that reaction by Connie, that uh, like, yeah, so what? <laughs> yeah, 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 and what? <laughs> <laughs> Like so childish, such a teenage reaction. And this is the thing, though. It's she brings Janet to the point. Janet, who to this point is, she wouldn't say boo to a goose. She's just lovely. She's sitting in the corner, watching everything going on, enjoying herself, um, just letting all the nonsense wash over until she gets pushed to the point where she goes, "Right, you know what? Yeah, enough. Um, I'm going to." tear you down now yeah i'm gonna and it's putting things right because it's a it's an issue of justice for fran as well isn't it it's like yeah it's more than it's more than just trying to get a a revenge on connie it's like no actually fran deserves she's going to get what she deserves which is the truth it's a fresh start it's all of that stuff um and and i love the fact that she doesn't she's so strong that she doesn't leave like you can imagine a lot of people having been humiliated in that way Fine, enough, which is, right i'm i'm going i'm going home like that's so embarrassing but she she just goes and sits down and actually holds her own holds her space and i think yeah i said admirable. earlier that um janet and Dwayne are the only people that didn't really seem to be hiding anything but actually fran isn't really either apart from being a little bit standing behind the bully go egging them on a bit um yeah she's, she's i don't think she does that re- from a malicious place though no like i say i think she's probably doing it from a self-preservation point of view yeah um but she hasn't and she, maybe an ignorant maybe a naive place she where is, she doesn't quite know she doesn't realize yeah, i think she is quite she comes off as very naive she can't mm. even spell congratulations on a banner yeah. um she's she does <laughs> she's quite 
not basic because that sort of seems a bit mean but yeah i think naive and well-meaning is just sees things as as they are and doesn't yeah go any deeper doesn't i don't think would do anything in a kind of machiavellian like no. she's not playing games she just no. she's no commie she's not which makes her perfect to <laughs> to go up to management i think yeah Connie Hopefully. will never be promoted to any position like that because she's vile to everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so off, yeah, off um, Janet goes to tell Fran and that's when the lights change, the fluorescent green lips appear. And we're like, ah, oh, I can lip read. Um, Did you, th- do you think she knew that was coming? Or was that just a delicious extra? I think it might just be a delicious extra. But where she tells her they look over unless, and oh look but does, do you see her does she change the lights herself How, who changes no, the lights I think she just She's goes still straight over her. to I think she just goes straight over to Fran doesn't she and is talking to her and then they change yeah yeah I think so yeah. maybe that one of the um, bridal party is having a play with the lights just testing them out like mm. Greg did yeah like Greg did yeah yeah and then, I, lo- I love that um, I think everyone's been in that scenario at some point of we're we're here until half past. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's nearly half past, so uh, <laughs> yeah. So no, I'm playing on this tennis court. Yeah. Until half past. <laughs> well, it's pretty much half past, but it's not though, is it? <laughs> it's weird. That whole environment is is weird. Like we we went to a stag do, didn't we? In a in similar of kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. And you have it for a specific amount of time and. Yeah, yeah, it's just a, it's a bit odd, but no, it's I fun. They, I guess this, this all plays out in real time again, doesn't it? It is a real time one. It's an hour they've got, isn't it? If they've got an hour, have they? So yeah. It, feel, it feels like it all takes place in the half hour. It does, yeah. There's no obvious Can't places that it's cuts. cut. No. no. No, that's a good point. Unless the the Hindu are really early, they are really early. <laughs> and it's probably no for the best. Really I think. Yeah. <laughs> I think that I think they need that added <laughs> added company. I, I think the the office do's kind of run its course. Really, I think it has. I don't know if they have plans to go anywhere afterwards, but I think it was probably done. <laughs> really, yeah. I think Dwayne and Janet might go somewhere, uh, and well, Roger it, and really, his his new his new friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think she likes white and egg? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking loud, not saying Hey, you're in there, Rog. So she's off my eyes. So, when they like a silver fox, well, go for it. Buy me a will. I wonder if she's into white snake. You got to ask her. No, Fred, I get up. Yeah, I think the only people that lose out of this really are Connie and Greg. I think so. I think, the, so. and I think the the moment with Janet and Dwayne at the at the end was really nicely done. Yeah, with the heartbeat. Yeah, yeah. Stone hard machine guns. <laughs> what? That's, that's the line in Titanic. Oh, is it? Is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. That was our, yeah, like I said, our, our first all out, no holds barred, happy ending. Yeah, definitely. Like. Yeah. Yeah, and it is, it is a really, and I think, because I've watched it, well, I've watched it three times now. The first time I watched it, I, I did find it uncomfortable and didn't really enjoy it very much. But then the third time I watched it, I was like, yeah, this is lovely. Like, it is a really nice nice ending and it's so nice that it ends in the way that you want it to end as well like it it is a re- like a nice refreshing change within the context of all the other episodes where it's like that's a nice gift as one out of the whole series and stuff the uh the tim and dawn moment yeah except only you <laughs> was was that song at the end of that rather than yeah being part way through um yeah, that's True. that's what I associate only you with. That that's that's the end of the office. Yeah, only you. Mm-hmm. Um, 
whereas titanium is the end of <laughs> this one. And I'd never appreciated the compression when that when the beat drops in titanium. Mm. That like ooh, 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 mm. like whoa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's like in t- the intensity of that sound is like it's massive compression on that we uh, we probably finished our clubbing days when that came out <laughs> yeah i don't remember ever being in a club but i think i'd have enjoyed that actually to be honest What did you do at karaoke? Um, oh, you did blur, didn't you? Did you do blur? I did some blur. Yeah, I definitely did some blur. Maybe pulp. Did I do some pulp? All, all the Brit pops. <laughs> Super grass. <laughs> 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 Probably some Radiohead if they had any. Like it's not not ideal party music, but <laughs> that's where I go. I like that. That was also um, a Lacouchette moment as well. Yes. Because that was the, our hostel. Yeah. Hostel, yeah. <laughs> How many different episodes of Inside Number Nine can be wrapped up in that evening? <laughs> Had a few, didn't we? Yeah. Well, two, at least. Two, so far. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> Did you find a shoe? Because next week... <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I had two shoes <laughs> with me. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, next week, Diddle Diddle Dumpling. Yeah. Which is... Yeah, I've only watched it once and remember weeping. So I'm looking it's forward to it. It's another one that people really like, isn't it? I loved it. That, so. So, see, this this series has got Riddle of the Sphinx and Diddle Diddle Lumpling, which is mad. Mm-hmm. You'd have thought you'd pace yourselves. <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> guess they're just... Hold that back. It's but, just what's coming out as they go along, isn't it? It's, it's like, I can't yeah. help it. Can't help it. So, um, yeah, if you've got any thoughts on uh, on uh, Empty Orchestra, uh, then we'd love to hear them before our wrap-up episode uh, at the end of this series. Please do email us at quietnightinside09 at gmail.com. Um, find us on Twitter at AQNIN9. Um, and, yeah, leave a, leave a review on Apple Podcasts and... Uh, other places we we actually we've had another one recently which i'd love to just sort of uh i don't know read out or just say thank you to um to the author of who was um oh crap thank you <laughs> <laughs> that was an explanation exclamation that it's disappeared <laughs> <laughs> that was um that's the name of the author so thank you to oh crap uh, yeah, for that was such a genuinely lovely, 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 um, and slightly scary moment, or a moment for me that <laughs> showed me that I probably look at reviews too much um, because it disappeared. And in my head, I wrote, uh, created a whole narrative around how. Um, so yeah, this the, oh crap! I had <laughs> said they'd only listened to a, the episode about Twelve Days of Christine. And and we're like, wow, what a great podcast. Um, some fascinating theories. Um, can't wait to listen to the other episodes. And then this, <laughs> the rating, the review had gone. So I just, in my head, it was right. They've listened to other episodes and they've oh, you know, completely changed their mind. They've taken away their review and their rating. Um, but then an, <laughs> then an update appeared and it's ev- even nicer. So uh, thank you, oh crap. <laughs> 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 it's been really nice to see um, a couple of new names in the um, email inbox as well. Um, yes, as some great bill to, stuff. We've had, we've had some stuff about the bill and some interactions on Twitter about it as well, um, which I really enjoy. I've said before that the AQNIN account nine, sorry, AQNIN nine is a nice corner of Twitter that I enjoy spending time on um, and doesn't make me upset with the world yeah spending time there um so please keep on contacting us there and speaking to us there because it's really nice yeah absolutely cool um right we'll be back again next week and we'll speak to you about diddle diddle dumpling goodbye goodbye